Hey there, it's Jaya Rose again. I'm just touching base with you. I'm going to show you a little, some tricks about lettering. I wanted to show you my table. I remember I told you I have a glass top table. I put this piece of vinyl on it though, because it has this little raised edge here of metal on the table. So this now evens it out. So I have a flat surface and I have a straight edge for my T-square to ride along the edge of, which of course you have to be careful of because now it's sticking on some tape, which it's rolling up a dot, and you'll find that that'll happen. So most of the time when you're moving your straight edge, you're kind of lifting it, right? Because once we start putting graphite on our page, we're going to be smearing it if we keep pressing on the graphite that's underneath that we've already laid down. So I wanted to show you a couple mistakes that a lot of people make, and guess what? I made it too, so that's why it's even more exciting to show it to you. So what I want to show you is that I started laying out eighth inch increments because I'm going to show you lettering, and I'm going to show it to you in eighth inch high text, and I'm going to go up here and show you some quarter inch high. So we know that one eighth is one half of one quarter. So it's very easy to use my scale. And I just use the quarter inch, eighth inch end, and I can set it down. I always want to put it up against my triangle because I want to be sure that I'm not elongating any of these measurements. Once my my triangle is not aligned, or I have it like so, and I'm doing measurements, I'm extending measurements or I'm reducing them. Either way, I'm not keeping my work in square and in then proportion, in scale and proportion. So this edge up against here, the triangle down here, and your, your scale up against it, and look at my hands. I'm holding this tight in place and I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna start drawing there. So what I did initially was I started right here, right, right along this line right here, and then you can see as I traveled up the page, I don't know, my straight edge went a little awry, my triangle was crooked, I wasn't holding it tight enough, so it kind of veered off, and that is not what I want. So you can see by putting that line through the correct ones, you can see how far off I come. So that happens. So you gain space, you know, as you move forward, especially if you're working small. The other thing that can happen is that when you're drawing your horizontal lines, which I started to do right here, when I'm because because I made a new row of tick marks, we just call those little tick marks when we're making a measurement, so that I can then pull my pencil right over it. So in theory, my line should be hitting right on that tick mark. I thought I made a, mis a little error somewhere, so I'm gonna go, and see. oh, here I can find it. So here it is, you see that one right there? Hold on. That one does not line up. Not a good choice. So, but you can see all the other ones, my pencil line goes through the tick mark and that's how I know that I'm in the right place. Now, another thing about tick marks, they tend to be heavier than your lines. These lines right here, these are called guidelines. Or perhaps some, they're called guidelines when they're for lettering, but if you're laying out a project or a floor plan, they're called construction lines. They're the same type of line. That means that it's a line that's there for only you. No one else. So it's you to use as a um, base to pull your other lines from. So in this case, these lines here, I call them whisper lines because that's how light they should be. I don't even really, <clears throat> hold on a second here. I don't um, even press my pencil to the paper. Watch what I do. I'm just dragging it. It's like one thumb and I'm just dragging it along the paper. So you see, that's how light it is. You just have to make sure that your bar is square to the edge of your table. I come up here, I find this spot, I bring my, oops, I bring my T-square to it, and then I make another line. And it's straight because I've kept my edge along the side of the table, and my paper is perpendicular 
to that edge. And I can show you that by showing you that the triangle and the T-square, when together, fit your paper right in the corner. So you've got a straight aligned piece of paper. Okay, uh, the one other error that could be made, and guess what? I made this one myself too. It's been a while since I've been on the drafting table, but what I didn't do in this area right here was my T-square, right? This is my T-square. I, I somehow moved it away, so it ended up creating you know, non-straight non lines. Unstraight lines or slope lines, I guess I would say. So you can see here, you see how all of this gets so tight and it's not like these below because my T-square was not straight on the edge of my table. So these are the things that I look for when I'm looking at your work and um, these are the things I'm looking for in my work, which tells me that I need to do more practice. I might teach it, but it's been a while since I have um, actually done this. So this is kind of fun for me to relearn a skill that I love, by the way. I love drafting. I know. I'm a sicko. I am a sicko. So what I was going to show you are some areas where you can use... Um, your lettering skills and practice. So that's what this piece of paper is about. I'm going to fill up the whole sheet and the, you're going to do two of these practice sheets. And so I'm just going to come through here and remind you of some of the lessons or as part of a lesson that I spoke to you about uh, when we were in our Zoom classroom. But it's about having your letter forms with similar shapes be consistent throughout the alphabet. Okay, so what I like to do is just Place the alphabet on this piece of paper as fast as I can. G, that's my G, H. Notice that an I is just a straight line. It doesn't have any little caps on it. It doesn't have a little circle above it. It's just an I, J, K, L, M, N, O, I feel like I'm six. I'm just learning my alphabet. Let's see. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so these are my letter forms. I don't know if you notice, but I want you to go back through and back up a little bit and notice that every stroke is an individual stroke okay so I'm not making I'm not do, making a B like one one stroke right we're not doing that our, our strokes are individual so this B has three strokes in it and I lift my hand from the paper I mean it's not out here but I lift my hand up to make those strokes each time on the page now, I've been doing this a while, so this I have a little better practice at. But what you want to do, I'm going to point out some of the letter forms that you want to look at for similar shapes. And pick whichever you prefer that you do naturally, and then go with that. So, you notice that my M and my W do not hit the line. So, they're exact upside-down um, reflections of each other. And therefore, my N is also part of that. So I have a W, an M, an N, and let's look at the V is similar. And that's where we're at with those, okay? So the other similar forms that we have, as far as letter forms go, is we have a P, an R, and a B, which all have the letter P in them. So you want to make sure that your top shape is consistent in all of your forms. Okay? So we mostly strive to have a vertical letter forms. We really don't want to slant. Uh, engineers used to slant their 
text or their lettering, um, you know, in the 50s and 60s. And it's just kind of um, not been in fashion, I'm going to say in fashion, uh, since then. But so what, right? We don't care. We're not, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> anyway, that doesn't make any sense. But okay, got to learn to uh, go with the flow here. So we're also going to look at similar letter forms of an E, an F, an H, right? We're going to look at these legs, and mine aren't doing that well, on the R and the K, right? So we're going to look at that. We have our O shape and we have our Q shape, similar forms. I'm just looking around to see what I see. Um, we could probably put this A shape in with these M, N, N, V, Ws because they all have a, a, a diagonal line as part of them and maybe even the X and the Y. So here we have our letter forms as they are and what I want you to do is be checking on these similarities between your letter forms because a tight lettering developed um, form will all look, to, look as one. Does that make sense? No, yes. So when you develop your lettering style, you will have a very tight form. All these shapes will just come naturally. But you need to practice. And that's, it literally takes just practice, practice, practice. So I want to show you the numerals uh, because those also have their own uh, way about them. So I'm going to just start with the letter 1, which is exactly like this I. So here's a little aside. You're going to learn later that when we're drawing elevation drawings and we have the symbols on our plans that we don't use the letter I because it does become confusing between the one. So if we're numbering or rather if we're lettering and assigning letters to a uh, schedule or whatever, um, I usually don't use an I. I just skip right to the J. I just don't want any confusions. It's too much like just a vertical line. Okay, but that's an aside. So back to the action here. So that's a one. Our two is an angular or a curved line, uh, like a little duck or swan uh, with a bottom edge. Our three is also, our four is closed at the top, not open, not this, right? And not this. Our five, our six, our seven, our eight, our nine, and our zero. Now my zero is a lot like my, my O. So this, these are the letter uh, forms and the numeral forms. And you notice that I made two uh, circles for my eight. It is not that, okay? And a seven is not that. Trying to think what else, how else do people get creative with their letter forms? Well, I think what's consistent in my letter form, for example, are these shapes here. That D shape, that B curve, that P curve, that Q, the O. So those really, uh, I think, tie together. My E, my F, my K all end up, mm, maybe not my K so much, but my R is up there. You see where the leg is so here this is a longer leg on my R than there is on my K and my K decided to skip skip along he's having a happy day today so you know if I look at my lettering I definitely have work to do we always do and I hope that you'll enjoy this once you get your lettering down and I will say that probably by the end of your second drafting course, you'll feel confident about your lettering and you'll see a huge change. That's when I notice it the most with students. Um, so in the beginning, it's funky, it's frustrating, we hate it, but we do it and we just keep practicing and then we get better. It's just like anything. So that's my little lesson on letter forms today. If you have any questions, you can always email me and or find me in Canvas. So thanks guys, I'll see you at the next video.